Hi Bhavna, how are you doing? Hi, very well. Very well, Dhruvi. Just a moment. Yes. Yeah, no problem. Yeah. Thank you. Hi. Hi. So for for the viewers who do not know, uh, Bhavna Mittal has been a part of um, RP Sanjeev Goenka's group, and she is the head of the digital and media communications team there. She is also a certified yoga teacher. and has been practicing yoga since many years despite her busy schedule she tries to uh, find a balance between working and staying healthy she is also a profound um, or she also has a profound interest in um, healthy living and uh, meditating thank you bhavna for joining us today um and and being a part of our journey in spreading the awareness about ayurveda and such ancient practices like yoga to uh, help us build immunity and stay healthy so thank you so much dhruvi and it's wonderful to be a part of the insta live session here on dr vedya uh, i joined sanjeev goenka group i had heard of dr vedya but uh, actually being live on our social media channels also an honor by itself yeah i'm sure uh so just to start start with why don't you tell us about something about your introduction with uh, yoga and how did you uh, kind of develop interest in it okay uh, so being in a joint family in north india we my grandfather used to keep practicing yoga off and on and we as kids hardly used to you know be there he used to keep telling us that do it with me and we would kind of shy away from it so um you didn't know that there is something which is called yoga which is very beneficial but we were kind of going in and out of it a uh, few years ago a friend of mine developed a very bad back ache and uh, just to motivate that person we decided that you know we should uh, join yoga because we had heard about the miracles and everything and always two is better than one and these kind of things so <laughs> thereby started my journey of yoga with the current uh, shivananda yoga center and uh, then also i was off and on uh, practicing it and then about 2 years ago when my previous job there was a role which i was evaluating outside india and then due to certain reasons i had to say no to them and uh, at that same time there was a yoga teacher training course happening at the center very close to my house and you know it's okay. something like uh, you feel that maybe if something's not uh, going right in your life let me just do something to keep my mind away of from it and that's when i actually did my teacher training course uh, this was a 3 month non residential course weekends 6:30 in the morning to 6:30 in the evening yeah. in winters but uh, yeah i did it and uh, i think that's been one of the most life changing decisions i've ever made yeah i'm sure actually like you said um, your grandfather and all of our grandparents have been talking a lot about these ancient practices like yoga and ayurveda but yeah. we never actually uh, tried it and it took it seriously but since now when the entire nation especially uh, the prime minister himself is talking about taking up these ancient practices um, to build your immunity in these difficult times um, to so to ask you forward what uh, sort of um, correlation did you find in yoga and immunity okay so uh, yoga as we all understand is literally asana and pranayam right that's what the current Correct. understanding of most people in yoga, for yoga is so when we are doing various asanas various postures there you are regulating your breath you are opening up your chest region you are breathing better you are actually focusing on your breath and uh, at the same time pranayama again is a lot of breathing practices so these help us breathe better now throw the toxins out of our body these are like there are some kriyas and all also where you can throw out the toxins from your body and all of that obviously coupled with a healthy lifestyle and positive thinking and good food can actually help us manage our immunity better correct uh, so in these times when um, there are a lot of gym and other modern equipments uh, available so how do you find yoga still uh, standing out to um, to help one's body become healthy and you know, uh, 
and I feel with yoga, it also does a lot with your mind and relaxes your mind. Correct me if I'm wrong there. No, no, so absolutely. what does? Sorry. So what does actually make yoga stand out from the other modern equipments today? Okay, so uh, first of all. the way gyms and all have propagated the whole thing it's uh, completely focused on physical development right your muscles and your stamina whereas yoga focuses on strength stamina balance and flexibility so in terms of the physical body changes these are the four things which are which yoga focuses on and uh, not literally only building on your muscle mass of course that is something which is a kind of a side effect of it but that's not the main part the main part in yoga is actually building your healthy mind so the healthier your mind the better your thoughts and the better you will be as a person so uh, yoga as you rightly said not only builds on physical but also mental and finally the spiritual thing again as i was saying earlier people tend to focus on yoga as asana and pranayama but there are the eight limbs of yoga as uh, defined in the yoga sutra and it literally starts from actually uh, you know being uh, one with the with the god or the universe at the final part so it starts with managing your societal norms your personal norms then asana pranayama and all those things so uh, the other very big difference uh, in yoga versus a gym is that you don't need any physical equipment your body is all you need if you have a mat great otherwise you can just put a blanket on the floor you can do something on the chair it's literally just you need to be there present as your uh, in person that's all it requires there's no equipment nothing at all and the third very important factor is that in uh, as i was also talking earlier gyms and all they uh, kind of focus more on the physical part on stamina and muscle building whereas yoga talks about the first principle of yoga is ahimsa and ahimsa not only how we understand it as non violence to other things but also non violence with yourself so how can you be non violent to your own body and listen to what it is and literally do as much as you can because all our bodies behave very differently on different days uh you might be able to do an asana perfectly in the morning and you can't do it in the evening you can uh, do sometimes some asanas on certain days depends on what you've eaten how your state of mind is if you are relaxed then you'll see that your postures are far better if you're not relaxing then literally you know you can't actually do uh, practice yoga so that's like those are the few major differences between yoga and gym i think yes very true i think in these difficult times when we cannot actually step out and head to our gyms it's very important that we can um, we should continue exercising in some or the other form maybe whether if it's yoga or any other home practices that we have mm-hmm. but just um keeping our body and mind engrossed in a physical activity is also very important and if we have yoga i think there's nothing better than just taking a mat like you said and practicing it at home mm-hmm. um yeah so when uh, right now um as you said um a lot of uh, people also emphasize on practicing yoga at a particular time so uh, my question is do we have uh, to follow a set routine to practice these yoga and perform these asanas or we can uh, perform it uh, throughout the day any any point of time so um, it's the ideal time to do yoga or any other spiritual practice actually is brahma muhurt which is actually before uh sunrise okay. but given our lifestyles and the way we are so actually uh, again morning time is the best but literally whenever you have time because end of the day it's about relaxing your body and relaxing your mind so any time you feel that you have that time to spend for yourself you can do it the only thing for uh, um, for asana practice you should not have had uh, a heavy meal about 2 3 hours 
before your uh, practice because it kind of interferes and the food is not digested yet. Otherwise, it's any time, any place. Just need a quiet spot and you can do it. I'm sure. So why don't you tell us about some of your uh, favorite asanas that you are doing currently to uh, maintain your immunity? Uh, okay, so I typically end up following a whole routine. So we have a set of okay. uh, basic 12 postures. So I follow the Shivananda Yoga. And uh, the typical class, it's the same class which will be happening in Delhi, in Gurgaon, in Bombay, anywhere across the world if you even go to Canada, Americas, the same set routine is, is followed. So it typically is initial relaxation, then the prayers, then Kapal uh, Bhati, Anlom Vilom, Surya Namaskar, and uh, followed by headstand, shoulder stand, fish, then um, sitting forward bend, uh, inclined plane. So it's literally like uh, then you have a Spinal twist, a balancing pose, which would be a crow or something. Then it's sitting, sorry, standing forward bend, triangle, and that's about it. So that's the complete routine. It's a full body thing. And uh, each of these, your breath behaves differently. Your mind behaves differently. So um, actually, all of these are something which, uh, as a regular practitioner, you start enjoying. Personally, these days I'm focusing on the headstand. I've been practicing yoga for a while, okay. but I just haven't been able to get it. So that's <laughs> what my focus is. But again, the more you focus on something, the more difficult or the more elusive it is. So it's literally, you know, I'm somewhere there, but that's my, right now, that's my goal in yoga. <laughs> sure, definitely. Also, uh, since you've been teaching yoga as well, right? Yeah. So, um, I, I, I suppose you would be getting a lot of complaints about muscular pain, pain in the shoulders, or pain in the uh, neck area or in the back side. Uh, um, so, uh, because since a lot of the, uh, us are working uh, professionals, so we do face a lot of um, um, pain in our mus muscle areas. Uh, because we have to sit in front of the laptop or computers all throughout the day. So uh, why don't you tell us some uh, easy to do uh, tips uh, that we can uh, sort of practice at the comfort of our uh, beds or chairs or even our work tables. Okay, so uh, again, a lot of us are now sitting at the tables and uh, sitting odd hours. And I think most of us actually working more <laughs> hours these days than we used to be. Typically, when uh, we were working from yes. home. So, um, how you sit in the posture is very important. And it's important to then keep stretching your body uh, whenever you can. And uh, again, focus on your breathing. So, what I can do is I can try to demonstrate a few asanas which we can uh, do sitting on a chair. Uh, again, uh, what we follow in the Shivananda routine and actually which makes a lot of sense even as a science student if I think of it is uh, that you should, uh, there are typically five movements of the spine. So actually they say that the flexibility of your spine is what determines your physical or uh, spiritual age and not really uh, how old okay. you are or how many cakes you have on your birthday cake, how many candles you have on your birthday cake. So uh, typically we try to at least capture these five uh, uh, movements of the spine in any class and then outside of it whatever you can do is a bonus. So as I mean earlier also what you were mentioning how much should we do and all of that. If you can do a one and a half hour class great. If you can do a, do a two hour class great. You have one hour, do that. You have 30 minutes, do that. If you don't have any of that, you can at least get yourself 10 minutes out. Just do three rounds of Surya Namaskar, couple of rounds of Kapal Bhati, couple of rounds of Anlom Vilom. There are enough and more uh, videos available online uh, to actually follow. And uh, literally 10 minutes is all you need. Just focus on your breathing, focus on your relaxation, and that's about it. So um, again, if uh, to come back to your previous question, if we were to look at a few exercises to do when we are sitting at, uh, at a desk and 
for these these are literally you really don't need to think too much about food and all because these are very very soft and easy exercises so okay. now first of all you start with uh, some eye exercises so you look up and down so look up look down do these about six times then look to your right look to your left right left then uh, look to the top right top left top sorry top right bottom left then top left bottom right top left bottom right then you do a kind of a clockwise thing so 12 o'clock 3 o'clock 6 o'clock 9 o'clock so twice like three times you can do this the other the next one is again anti clockwise so you look up 9 o'clock 6 o'clock 3 o'clock back to 12 so a few rounds of these then you come to your neck so you go like uh, from top to uh, the bottom so the next is your sure. neck exercises so again typical neck exercises so you look up look down up down then to your right center left center right left then uh, you do then you go they try to get your ear as close to your shoulder your shoulders need to be relaxed then come back to the center then the other side come back to the center so that's taken care of then you start with your hand exercises so typically what we call the elephant pose for kids so you place your palm here and try to push your hand to the other side then the same thing on the uh, left again it's very important that every asana you do you have to be completely balanced out on both sides then uh, the typical pose of trying to get your elbow next to your ear place your hand at the back and push it towards your ear then to the other side and relax then uh, interlock your fingers put them behind your head try to push your head against your arms so this is a very nice stretch for your uh, back neck muscles and then you try then you get it forward so do a counter pose so these focus on your uh, neck region then is uh, like just try and show it to you just a sec yeah so then you try to get your legs up uh, okay let me try to just get this close okay just a moment okay so now uh, i know how much is it is so you try to get a leg up then you are yeah. leg up do this for a count of five or six breaths then you again take your leg up and take your hands up and then come down and try to hold your leg wherever you can and try to bring your uh, a head closer to your knee again do as much as you can some of us can catch at those others can just reach here so ahimsa with your body is what you're supposed to do do it on <laughs> side so uh, typically these then uh, you do uh, a backward bending asan so uh, uh, uh. so so you need to interlock your fingers behind your back and push your uh, Uh, shoulders back and okay. your head back you can do the standing or sitting then uh, you go to the spinal twist so again we forward forward backward now we do the spinal twist so make a namaste and try to push your uh, knee uh, the left knee with your right elbow you are not able to see it but i'm just pushing it there come back to the center yes. and the other side okay so that's done so this is like a twist uh, um, final twist yeah. you can do this uh, standing up also so what's called the twisted triangle that's for slightly more advanced people but this is something which everybody can do then you do a typical standing forward bend so either you do standing forward or you can sit uh, keep your knees uh, about shoulder width apart raise your hands and then push your uh, back down and place your palms on the floor so just kind of doing a forward bend there bend. and uh, then a typical balancing pose so you yeah, interlock your fingers come up on your toes 
And finally, for the lateral stretch, you do the triangle. So keep your feet three to four feet apart, and then take your uh, right hand up and push towards the uh, sorry left hand up, go towards the right, and then the other side. So if you do this kind of a routine, you've covered the forward bend, the backward bend, uh, the lateral sides, uh, twisting, and uh, again keeping your uh, spine straight, and then. just after this use the next 2 to 3 minutes to completely relax your body from the toe to the hip and that really is something which is pretty easy to do wherever you are sitting and uh, how you're planning to do definitely yeah definitely i think you've shown an entire body um, relaxing technique to us with these asanas i'm sure uh i am going to uh, definitely try these out uh so also i while i was reading our comments right so um varshik does mention about since we are get, getting into the summer month or are in mid- middle of the summer month what should we do to maybe improve our digestion system and um like for, for people who have belly fat what can they do at their um houses right now to um maybe uh, improve their digestion system okay so uh, for that then there are certain postures which actually help you uh, massage your internal organs and uh, manage that so uh, maybe a sitting forward bend uh, the same okay. kind that on the chair you can actually put a mat on the floor and sit down and do that that's a very good thing surya namaskar is a very very good full body workout you do three or six rounds yes, of surya indeed. namaskar and uh, again plenty of videos available on the net and that's something which uh, really benefits uh, your overall body uh, toning up then uh, you have things like the spinal twist uh, again whenever you are focusing on your abdomen your neck then uh, you have balancing posture so if then you uh, go into the vipreet nakasan you kind of balance on your uh, buttocks and you have your hands and uh, feet up so that helps in strengthening your core uh, we okay. don't really uh, talk about plank too much but plank again is a part of the surya namaskar the uh, postures as well so that again helps in keeping your core uh, kind of uh, well maintained yeah sure uh, so actually in these difficult times and when there is so much negative negativity around uh, what can you um, do to maybe or can you share some basics of meditation which can keep ourselves motivated and positive every day uh so good you came on to that again uh, you know the five points of yoga which we talk about is uh, yeah. proper uh, exercise proper breathing proper relaxation proper food and positive thinking and meditation so anybody who is able to manage all of them is actually a true yogi uh, for meditation uh, ideally you should have a quiet corner to try to use the same place every day and uh, there are guided meditation techniques so you can follow those or if you feel that you can manage and just sit down and uh, really focus on your own breath and uh, and chant any personal mantra or om and uh, just maintain silence you will have your thoughts uh, coming in so literally you get take the thought in and try to throw it out rather than spending too much time for it and the more you practice the better your mind comes under control and that's really about it okay i'm sure yeah we need to actually uh, keep ourselves calm right now during this time so definitely meditation will help um also um since a lot of us is talked about keeping um the elderly and the kids um also immunized and keeping themselves active at um like every day so uh, which forms of yoga or asanas can you recommend for the elderly and the kids so uh, what we did right now the chair asana routine routine that's something which anybody of any age can uh, follow okay. for kids there are uh, like 
yeah, this kind of a routine can be done, but they need something to keep their energy under control. So get them to do the basic Surya Namaskar itself and uh, some of the fun asanas like maybe a bow, a wheel, those kind of things which kids enjoy doing, making a king cobra. And the bodies are so flexible. It's very interesting to see that things which we are struggling with, the kids can do so easily. Definitely. So that's all of it. Uh, but uh, for kids, it's very important that uh, we do not get them to do pranayam because they're still uh, breathing very okay. We as adults uh, do something which we call negative breathing because we are literally um, breathing uh, in and our stomach goes in, which is wrong because your stomach should go out and vice versa. So most of us are actually doing a negative breathing and that's why it's important to follow the pranayam techniques or proper breathing. But kids like typically are breathing well, they are developing their organs and everything. So Keep them off pranayama. Sure. I think they like doing is uh, whatever is fun for them. As long as they enjoy it and their mind is at it, then they can keep it. Uh, there are a few things on you know, making sure that the kids relax as well. So there are guided techniques on those. So asking them to imagine that they're going through a garden and looking at flowers, yeah. smelling them. So you kind of tell them what color flowers do they see. So just kind of make a mental picture feel that there is a river flowing. So that just to keep their minds engaged, that's something yeah. which uh, is important. Otherwise, whatever we are doing as adults, they can do better. So it's really <laughs> as much as you can get them or you can learn from them. <laughs> Definitely. So I think you very well explained everything. You talked about digestion and how, how important it is um, for uh, immunity as well. So in Ayurveda also we emphasize a lot of um, a lot of uh, keeping our digestive system also uh, healthy. So I'm sure with these yoga asanas that would be taken care of and the immunity is also would be ma maintained there. Absolutely. So, yeah. And uh, I think, uh, Ruby, the previous sessions which you are having, typically talking about diet and doshas. So, again, in these times, it's better to have a sattvic diet and keep slightly more tamasic food away from your from our day-to-day uh, -day, uh, food. I mean, day-to-day -day food. And uh, again, all the Ayurveda techniques which you've been talking about, there's so many products which are available with Dr. Vedas as well can actually help people maintain the immunity and better it of course with good breathing and good relaxation yeah definitely i think it was uh, really lovely having you today with us in the session and uh, yeah if if you all want to know anything about dr vedya's products to go on www.drvedya's.com or leave us a message we will definitely answer your queries if we've not covered in the live session i'm sure bhavna can help us with some uh, uh, yoga techniques and asanas as well yeah thank you so much thank you dhruvi thanks for organizing thank you this. thank you thank everyone you. thank you bye bye bye, -bye. bye. Hi guys, my name is Arjun Vedya and I'm the CEO of Dr. Vedya's. I hope you like what you heard. If you want more content on health and Ayurveda in the 21st century, please click the subscribe icon. We've got a lot more coming for you.